titled Made in Heaven and uh, well I don't know whether I'd consider those man boobs I'm not sure I guess that's a self-portrait well a lot of people thought Jeff kind of went off the track when he got involved with the uh, soft porn end of uh, the art thing, and uh, I don't know. It's got a lot of makeup on there. Uh, somebody's talking about the fluffer, Jeff's fluffer. Uh, Maybe the uh, more controversial aspects of this was the uh, the child that uh, he and Chicholino had, and uh, I guess they're involved in a custody battle for years. And I'm not sure, but I think at some point he actually uh, had to snatch the kid and. Uh, Trying to get him away from the mother, I don't know, that's... But... You want to sit around and... <laughs> look up at something like this and go, Gee, Mom and Dad, is that when I was conceived? So this is more flowers. And I'm not sure, but I think this is carved wood paint. This gallery is titled Easy Fun. I guess we could talk a little bit about shiny art and uh, well if you've been following the James Calm report you know that there's a couple of various aesthetic approaches that are very popular these days in the New York scene one of them is the uh, kind of abject crapstraction and uh, it's where people are using thrown away things and funky sheetrock, crappy cardboard, masonite, reused paintings. And uh, a lot of that is a re reaction against uh, artists like Jeff Koons and Damien Hirst that uh, have these factories of people making these very large, shiny, kind of impersonal art objects. Although again, uh, there is a kind of a superficial quality about the color that uh, I think even Clement Greenberg might appreciate. Easy, fun, ethereal. Well, now we're coming to the part of the show that I have some real problems with. Although I kind of like the little elephant. These are stainless steel with uh, lacquer paint on there.
I guess it's probably been eight or ten years ago, they ran an article in uh, one of the Art World glossy magazines, maybe Art Forum, about uh, Jeff's process for having the paintings made. And uh, he designs all this with Photoshop, goes through several steps of cutting out pieces from other photos, laminating them together, and then this is all painted somewhere else. He has teams of painters, I don't know, maybe in China for all I know, and uh, simply take the, take the Photoshop design pieces and uh, very tediously copy them and uh, well for my taste as a painter these have got some of the most deadpan uh, perfunctory kind of tedious bad painting but uh, what else is new that's kind of Jeff's Jeff's aesthetic and uh, but I think it is interesting that as someone who is a uh, sculptor and has made his reputation as a sculptor I think it says a lot that uh, at some point he decided that he was gonna have to get in on the uh, the painting market now I don't know how big this painting is but I would assume that this just looks like it's about 10 by 15 feet, something like that. And, uh, well, the mustache, the brown mustache is kind of interesting. But, uh, again, this kind of, uh, looks a lot like a James Rosenquist painting without the, uh, without the verve, without the, uh, painterly, uh, swagger. And I guess that these paintings take quite a while to get done. There's a lot of minute <laughs> migraine-inducing details. Fourth floor. Okay, well, it's titled Celebration, so this is the full-blown Coons Corporation product. Oh boy, I wonder if he's getting product placement money from uh, Legos. Oh, I think these just might be, if these are not digital prints, he's got some very good uh, technicians making these paintings for him and they've uh, photoshopped them down into a nice, uh, I don't know what you call that program, modeling. Well, so this gallery is titled Celebration, and, uh, okay, this is the, uh, kind of the current huge Coons Corp Productions, and, uh, I was just saying, uh-oh, get the baby away from there, oh my god. I think I saw this piece on the roof of the Met uh, a couple of years ago. Oh, that poor child. Well, they were talking about the fact that uh, to fabricate these 
sculptures and to get this kind of uh, beautiful finish. These are all hollow stainless steel that uh, Jeff had to work with some very advanced technical factories and uh, I guess maybe even paint factories, lacquer producers. This is sort of like a nice blown up pile of Play-Doh. Play do. Well, I kind of like the like the color thing. Now, I could be mistaken, but I think that it was a piece like this that. Uh, Set an auction record for living artists at some time? Something like, I don't know, $22 million, something approaching that. Well, there are some interesting questions that this work does kind of pose, and one of them is the the view of what is precious, what isn't precious. It's this title, Moon, Light Pink, 1995 to 2000. So some of these pieces obviously take years to fabricate. But as I was saying, it's kind of interesting to uh, think about value, preciousness, and uh, how does that uh, cross over and get conflated with kitsch and bad taste and uh, vulgarness? This is Popeye. Well, I remember seeing a lot of these works at the Sanoban Gallery. 10 years ago. Again, I was impressed. These are, I believe, cast and painted aluminum. Now, a piece like this actually uh, also relates, I think, uh, aesthetically and conceptually to uh, Warhol's Brillo boxes. And uh, Arthur Danto, in one of his early reviews, said that when Warhol was able to produce the Brillo boxes, that that was the end of art because he had totally reintegrated art into life when you could no longer tell the difference between a real Brillo box and one of his artistic creations. There's more of his <laughs> mail order painting. Although this one's a little a little better. This piece is titled Hulk Organ. 2004 to 2014, so this is a recent piece, but uh, actually I kind of like the uh, the way that he's splicing in the organ keyboards. This is bronze. And uh, yeah, there's a whole notion of the simulacra that was very popular in the 80s. Here's the Liberty Bell. The 
This gallery is titled Antiquity. And this is Metallic Venus. This is nice. We got a uh, balloon version of the Venus of Willemsdorf. Calling this Bloom Venus. And uh, God, there is something beautiful about the uh, the spherical forms here on the back, the way the light reflects off them. And uh, of course, these kind of relate to uh, Brancusi and his polished surfaces. Well, I think these are the pieces that were uh, featured in the recent show, uh, the double show at uh, David Zwerner and uh, Gagosian. And, uh, well, he's actually falling back on <laughs> maybe the, the ultimate crutch, neoclassicism. It's titled Antiquity Monet. I think one of the things that interests me is uh, Jeff Koons as a corporation. Uh, the whole idea of when when does an artist stop being an artist and start being a company, a uh, conglomerate? Is it? Uh, important to have the human touch the I don't know people say I fetishize the, the touch of the artist but uh, I don't know the last time I checked uh, computers animals and insects don't have fetishes so maybe there's something uh, inherently human about uh, fetishes they probably have to put fresh flowers in here every day. And uh, maybe one of the other critiques I would have is that uh, I think that uh, Jeff as putting too much uh, emphasis on uh, kind of the return to childhood, the kind of enforced lengthening of adolescence. And uh, I mean, that's fine, but that's only a tiny part of the human life. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of tragedy and a lot of kind of dignity in uh, maturing out of childhood and adolescence and even young adulthood. Well, this is the lobby gallery and they're calling this the gazing ball. And I assume this is based on a classic Greek marble and again the blue ball. Oh, there's the famous Hercules sculpture. This uh, has got to be about 12 feet tall. Well, these are beautifully fabricated.
This is James Com reporting for the last time from the Whitney Museum on Upper Madison Avenue on Jeff Koons' a retrospective. Thanks, Whitney, for many years of uh, wonderful art viewing, and we'll catch up with you downtown. And thank you, Kate. Better not come around here no more. Might have got a shotgun for your head. Better not come around here no more. I don't care what they have right here no more. You can't come around here no more. I got a shotgun for your head.